Her first book, The Woo Woo, has been described as a darkly comic coming-of-age memoir that offers a moving look at the Asian immigrant experience as well as a frank depiction of the impact of mental illness on a family. Now, five years later, Lindsay Wong is back and here to talk about Tell Me Pleasant Things About Immortality, a collection of short stories. Welcome, Lindsay. First off, the book has been described as a collection of immigrant horror stories. Little did I know once I started reading it uh, that that was uh, meant in quite the literal sense. Uh, the opening piece, uh, Happy Birthday, features one of the characters turning into a monster. Uh, so we're off to a, a roaring start. Uh, what attracted you to this genre? Yeah, I think um, I've always been interested in writing about the immigrant experience. Um, and we tend to always look at it from a very sad, realistic lens. And so for me, it became really important to incorporate these elements of mythology and horror. And I think there's something wonderful about the horror genre. You can do all sorts of things that you wouldn't normally use um, if you're writing about it in a contemporary way. Um, then there's the story from which the book gets its title, Tell Me Pleasant Things About Immortality, about uh, the world's oldest woman who manages to survive after a, a night-blooming uh, death lily and also the focus of a reality TV show. Uh, mm -hmm. What was the inspiration here? I think as a culture, we're always obsessed with beauty, um, particularly Chinese culture. We're always talking about youth. We're always talking about, can we stay young forever? Um, and I thought about, you know, what happens if, you know, we stay intact forever and what if we don't? And and so the story became, you know, that whole idea of grotesqueness, like we're going to fall apart. We're going to be these beings that we're scared of. Um, and so I really wanted to explore that, you know, every character wants something and and she gets what she wants or what she thinks she wants. But then at the end, you know, she ends up in a glass box. Now, why do you think people only want to hear pleasant things about immortality? What are you saying here? I think, you know, we don't want to think about the afterlife. Or if we do, you know, we think about vampires and how we're going to be young and glamorous forever. And, and that's not true. Um, it sounds like a horrible thing in immortality and Chinese culture specifically. Um, there's a lot of ancestor worship. So we're always burning um, fake paper money to the ancestors. We're sending houses and cars. In some cases, we're sending Viagra because we think like the dead are among us and they still want what the living want. And um, so I've always grown up with the idea that the dead are around us and they're just like people. And I, I really wanted to explore that in this collection. Now, there's a lot of detail that goes into uh, the character's looks, and I wonder as well that if this is a comment on the problems uh, we as a society have with aging, specifically among older women. I think so. I think so, especially um, in Asian culture. We are so obsessed with looks. We think that, you know, a low forehead means someone would be born with low IQ. We also think, you know, someone with small ears is really lucky, um, and so there's that appearance on luck and, and looks. Um, and so I think that's something I really wanted to think about and examine and how, you know, we tell each other these stories um, and how we don't tell each other these stories. Now, there's another story, The Ugliest Girls, which seems to be an almost absurdist take on the immigrant experience. You have a group of ugly girls led by the protagonist named Chicken Face, uh, mm -hmm. who are sent to live in a faraway place across the sea called the Gold Mountain. Uh, likely BC, uh, the quote, ugly girls must serve the country's economy. Uh, how much of that is meant to mirror the actual immigrant experience? Um, in many ways, it does. Um, and it's also, it's satirical in that sense that, you know, um, it's unwanted women, right? Um, they're based on their looks, but in this case, they're ugly and they're sent across the ocean and they are selling their pain and trauma um, and so, you know, in the story collection, a lot of it is based on women's pain and the idea that it can be transformed and given to someone. And in this case, leeches, um, they take out the pain and they're sold to the highest bidder. And, and so I wanted to look at that as well. I guess ugly as well could be meant as a substitute for someone who was poor of low social standing as well. Mm -hmm, for sure. And and that I think happens to a lot of marginalized people and women, especially when you leave a country and you come to another country and you are, you know, you're carrying, you know, your family secrets or history. Um, you have like all this horror coming behind you. The line to me really resonates the how ugly girls must serve the country's economy. And I'm I'm reminded of folks who come here and 
and are obligated to send money back to the family uh, back home as well. I, I, it was an interesting parallel to me. It, it, were you kind of going for that as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you leave your country, you can never leave it behind, right? There's people, there's memories, there's, you know, the ghosts that follow you. Um, and so for me, it's really about that whole immigrant experience because it's, you know, it's a really complicated and textured narrative that we um, tell ourselves, right? Um, and it's full of inherited drama um, and secrets. What do you think is the the unifying thread among all these stories here? Um, I think for me, it's really about, you know, the immigrant experience, particularly diaspora, um, the Asian Canadian, Asian American experience. Um, and I think just looking at it, you know, um, there's usually so much suffering and pain and turmoil. Um, and but for me, I always think, you know, there's also absurdity in it and um, humor. Um, you know, Joan Didion said, you know, we tell ourselves stories to live, but for women of color, it's really about we tell each other stories to survive, right? And so much of it is family mythology and, and culture and, and, you know, looking at it from that lens and being like, well, you know, all this horrible things have happened to us, but can we think about it and can we thrive and survive and, you know, tell our stories? What do you hope readers take away from the book? I hope they um, see a bit of themselves in it. Um, you know, we are, you know, we're a country of immigrants, but also at the same time, we're all people, you know, who are going through everyday um, society. We all have wants and desires. And sometimes, you know, we don't get what we want, um, unfortunately. And, and hopefully that cycle doesn't continue into death. The name of the book is Tell Me Pleasant Things About Immortality. It's available from Penguin Canada. My thanks to author Lindsay Wong. Thank you so much.